Guess what, guys? It's Radio Free Innsmouth, episode 9! Nine, 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 nine. And so that means we're gonna talk about Nocturnal Mortem again, because they're a good band and I feel like there's a lot to be said about them. Wow, get a load of this asshole bringing up Nocturnal Mortem again. Aren't you supposed to be working on your Schoenberg review or that Macabre Omen review you hinted at like a month ago? Hey, it's my show. I'll do what I want if that's okay with you. Whatever. Just don't be surprised when people accuse you of going all... Notice me, senpai! Notice me! With nocturnal mortem. Yeah, I'll take it under advisement, bud. So it looks like we're off to the Eastern Bloc for a little bit more Slavic black metal this week. Well, so let's buy both ticket and go back home. Buy ticket and go back home? Natasha, where is your pride? Your professional integrity? We steal tickets and go back home. So Nocturnal Mortem started out as kind of a doom, death, my dying bride, dark tranquility-ish type thing in 1991 under the name... Separation. I knew it was up in there. I knew it was in there. Sometimes you gotta defrag that mental hard drive. They started out as a band called Separation, 1991, but they found out, uh uh-oh, there's a band from France called Separation, who's actually a really good band. I would recommend their first album pretty highly, so they're like, fuck, we can't be Separation anymore, Jesus, so we'll change our name to Crystalline Darkness. You know, that's kind of an obscure, weird name, but uh uh-oh, somebody else already had a band named that, so then Kinyaz Vargoth, who's kind of like the main brains behind Nocturnal Mortem for their multi deck decade existence. He's like, fuck it. We're changing our name to Nocturnal Mortem, but we're going to make the C into a K and we're going to spell Mortem wrong so that nobody can steal our band name because it'll be all weird. A sound plan. And it seems to have worked for them and they've since managed to hold on to that band name because they're the, you know, the probably Ukraine's biggest uh, metal export. I know that Drudik was pretty huge for a while, but that was more of a passing fad, whereas Nocturnal Mortem seems to have been pretty perennial. So they put out a three song demo under the separation band name called Miyagama Cos Mephisto that wasn't anything great but eventually they got around to changing their name to Nocturnal Mortem after going through the Crystal and Darkness phase and they put out a demo called Twilight Fall that I would consider a full length album and I think that Nocturnal Mortem does as well because they've pressed it to CD several times it's like 40 minutes long it's got you know an intro and an outro but also like six big fucking songs each of them are about like eight minutes long and it feels like a full-length album it doesn't feel like a demo at all it's pretty good stuff it's definitely very experimental they were kind of fucking around with a lot of different kind of gothic music influences i think they were influenced by celtic frosts into the pandemonium album a lot they were probably also into christian death and uh stuff like that you know fields of the nephilim and that kind of thing but at its core it was definitely kind of doom metal black metal a little bit of melodic death metal and a lot of the melodic death metal influences there because of the uh, guitarist at the time was named Wotherax, who definitely had sort of an 80s shred edge to his uh, lead playing, which came through on their uh, second demo as Nocturnal Mortem, Lunar Poetry, which uh, is another one where I would consider that not only a full-length album, but also a classic, probably one of the best black metal albums ever made. That one's also really long, and it has very well-thought-out songs. It definitely doesn't feel like a demo at all, and Nocturnal Mortem has played songs off of this so-called demo live up to the present day so even though it's technically it started out as a demo and it wasn't originally officially released outside of the tape trading circuit i would say lunar poetry is a an album it's not just a demo even though it says it's a demo and even you know when you get a cd copy it still has like tape hiss in the background because there wasn't like a proper master tape made and all that i still think it sounds good so this album lunar poetry kind of really cemented what nocturnal mortem was going to be about for a while So very heavy keyboard use, very melodic guitars, and there's a lot of counterpoint going on. Nocturnal Mortem, at this stage in their career, and especially on the uh, debut full-length album that came out right after this, they were all about very dense levels of counterpoint. So you'll have at least two different keyboard layers going, playing something against two different guitar layers, and even the bass will kind of be doing its own thing. It won't all just be playing the same kind of stuff. It's very broke. Uh, There's so many things going on. Everything is so dense. I would have dropped that same in there but I'm lazy I couldn't find red letter meter saying it so whatever 
Red Letter Meter. Red Letter, Red Letter Media. There we go. That Why is that hard to say? There's a lot of R's and L's. Maybe I'm Chinese. I can't pronounce things. So Nocturnal Mortem were interesting, and then they, they kind of had this brother band called uh, Lucifugium, where the guys from Lucifugium would do guest spots in Nocturnal Mortem songs, and then the guys from Nocturnal Mortem would show up on Lucifugium stuff. They actually reissued the first uh, three-song Nocturnal Mortem demo Miyagama Cos Mephisto as a split tape with uh, Lucifugium's Path of the Wolf demo. Lucifugium, also a very good band, particularly uh, like mid 90s Lucifugium through, say, 2005 ish. They did some really good classic albums. Big in the uh, Ukrainian underground. So the Ukrainian underground is started by Lucifugium and Nocturnal Mortem. They end up diverging along ideological lines. Nocturnal Mortem is going harder and harder with the Volkish stuff and the right-wing politics and the paganism and all that kind of thing, whereas Lucifugium was more into standard black metal stuff, evil, darkness, trees, forests, caves, spooky shit. I'm just excited to see my lord and savior Baphomet represented in such glorious Italian stone. I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. So this kind of thing sort of represents a split that was occurring in black metal generally around this time, you know, during the uh, mid-90s through the early aughts, where a lot of people, they weren't really content with, you know, just scaring people with the paint and talking about Satan or whatever. They started to get more serious, you know, trying to build up a philosophy around the music, and it generally tended to be fairly right-wing, whereas there were other people that were more maybe into it for the aesthetics, or maybe they just weren't down with the right-wing stuff. They were more into individualism or whatever. Usually these splits uh, were fairly acrimonious, you know, we're talking Varg Vikernay is stabbing Euronymous in the head. I'm not saying that's the only reason he stabbed the guy, but Euronymous was a communist and Varg uh, was, you know, Varg. So I'd say that had something to do with it. But uh, Louis Fugium and Nocturnal Mortem, they never really got mad at each other. They just kind of diverged and Nocturnal Mortem, you know, goes from there on to make black metal history with the album I'm going to be principally analyzing this week, Goat Horns. So I'm going to warn you right now, I'm going to get a little autistic here because Goat Horns is maybe my favorite black metal album of all time. It's certainly up there. Really good stuff. I've analyzed the fuck out of this album for years and I always find new things when I hear it. To demonstrate the level of like musical complexity we're dealing with here, uh, Nocturnal Mortem actually put an overture on this album called Black Moon Overture. Normally, if I see a black metal band open up the album with a keyboard only intro that's called Such and such overture. I'm going to roll my eyes at them because they're being pretentious, but in this case, Nocturnal Mortem actually wrote a real overture. So what an overture is, in the uh, operatic sense, is you have a piece of extended instrumental music at the beginning of your opera that introduces melodic themes that will later be expounded upon over the course of the opera. So in the uh, Black Moon Overture, we hear something like this. And then, in a later song on that album, that little uh, theme you heard is revisited like this. Another example to prove that it's not a fluke, here's something from the overture. And then we have one of the last riffs you hear on the album going a little something like this. (laughs) 
So I feel like those clips show that not only is Nocturnal Mortem really good at writing motifs where they change how a melody might sound and mood and tone over the course of a piece of music, but they also show the variety of moods that Nocturnal Mortem put into their music. It's black metal, but it's not just all scary or, you know, and like the happy parts aren't all the way happy. They're melancholic, bittersweet, but not in a cheesy way. It also shows the kind of counterpoint we have going on. Like I said, there's tons of keyboard layers. I think uh, on Goat Horns, at that point, there was like nine people in the band when they played live because all the wacky shit they had going on. And I think stuff like that's cool. I like a band that has a lot of ambition, but they don't just have the uh, ambition. They got the compositional prowess to back that up. So good on you, Nocturnal Mortem album. Great album with Goat Horns. Every Nocturnal Mortem album is great. Go get them all, especially uh, especially goat horns but also like the the last two they put out verity and voice of steel those were really really good stuff too good band check them out nocturnal mortem represents an antidote to the malaise of modern man they reject pop songwriting styles in favor of intellectual stimulation they reject normie tier philosophies in favor of rediscovering their past instead of slavishly adhering to materialism and consumption sexual gratification they reach towards the Sun. Fuck it! Okay, maybe that was a little bit gay, but I think you know where I'm going with this. Nocturnal Morum, good band. I like their approach to doing things, and I feel like we can learn a lot from it. Peace! <laughs> Why did you hit me in the face with a coconut custard pie with whipped